Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create this loading circle animation in Adobe After Effects CC. So whether or not you plan on actually needing a loading animation like this, I hope you'll still take away some really interesting things about shape layers, expressions, keyframes, and more. So to begin, let's create a new composition, and I'm just going to keep it the default 1920 by 1080 default size, black background, and I'll keep it at 30 seconds. That should be plenty of time for me to make this example. And then let's go to layer, new shape layer. And here's where we can begin creating our first circle shape. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool in the corner here. And I'll click and drag while holding shift to create a symmetrical circle. You can make it as large or small as you want. I'll just keep it a nice medium size. Now in the right hand side in the align panel, I can always center it by clicking the vertical and horizontal center. And in the top panel again, I can adjust the fill and stroke settings. So I'm not gonna be using a fill, so it doesn't matter what color it is, but here I can adjust the stroke size to something that I think is a good width. So I'm gonna put it at around 100 for this example. And then I'll drop down the ellipse in the actual layer panel so I can see everything that's going on and adjust it. And here's where I can see there's the stroke one and the fill one. And for the fill, I'll drop down that layer and turn down the opacity all the way down to zero. So we're left with just the stroke. Now for this little background, it'll be the canvas of our pre or unloaded circle like you saw in the beginning. So I'm gonna to go to the stroke and also lower the opacity of that down to maybe 10% because this will kind of be our backdrop. Now I'm gonna press Command C and Command V to just duplicate that layer once more, except this time we're gonna start playing around with the actual loading bar. So let's open up the contents again, drop down that ellipse menu, and I'll bring the stroke opacity back up this time but let's adjust a few things with it. So instead of 100 stroke width, I'll make it more like 90. So we can begin to see a little bit of separation there happening. And I'm also gonna add a dashed line because I think that looks cool. So the dashes section is built right in here. I'll press plus. That'll give us one layer of dashes to work with. And you can adjust the amount of dashes or separation between them and also rotate through them. The only thing you want to keep in mind is not to cut a dash off at a weird point. I think that just doesn't look symmetrical. So you can adjust the offset and the dash size until you get something that looks pretty symmetrical and to your taste on both ends. As you can see, you can't see a weird line break. So now that I have the dash and the backdrop circle built, I want to start adding some features on this to animate it. So if you see this little add button arrow, whenever you're working with shape layers, you can create all kinds of little very fun adjustments on them. So the first one we're gonna add to begin animating things is the trim paths button. So with that, it'll just pop right up where we added it, trim paths one. And in this drop down menu, we can trim the start and end of the path. So if I drag that end in to zero, you can see it pulls it all the way back. And if I take it to 100, it fills the path all the way up. And you can see how this is gonna create our animation. So basically, we'll just click the stopwatch icon where we want the animation to start happening. So zero seconds is a good one. Click the stopwatch icon, it'll create a keyframe at 0%. And then however long you want the loading animation to take. So I'll go to five seconds, let's say, and then create another keyframe at 100%, and that'll automatically create the keyframe whenever you make an adjustment. Nobody likes long loading times, so if I press play there, you'll see it goes from zero to 100 in five seconds. Boom. Now there's also some minor adjustments that you can make to make things look a little bit more fun, a little bit more advanced, and that's adjusting the velocity of the keyframes. So if I just actually highlight this, I can go to the keyframe assistant, and do some basic simple ones like ease out. So the next thing I wanna do is add that charge of color that happens as it starts charging up. So here we can go to the stroke again and just add some simple keyframes on the color parameter. So by default it's white, but you can make it whatever colors you want. So let's click at a stopwatch icon keyframe at the very beginning at zero. And for me, I'll make it red. That's your typical like phone battery dead is red color 
and then I'll go all the way to the end and I, I can actually go to the exact point that my other keyframes are at by opening up where one of them is, clicking this little arrow to go to next keyframe on this property and that'll align my playhead exactly on that keyframe so I animate everything at the same time and then adjust the color to be something else. So I'll adjust it to be green. So when I press play, you'll see it starts off red, kind of goes orangish yellow, and then locks into fully loaded green at the 100% mark. One other really cool addition that I made to kind of make it feel more particle-like is click add one more time, and this time let's search for the wiggle paths effect, add that on there, and this will just kind of wiggle, add a little bit of bounce to the path, and it makes it feel more alive to me. It kind of feels more organic. So if I press play on that, you'll see it kind of has this interesting wiggle going on. But what I'm going to do is actually add some keyframes on that as well. So you can experiment with some different additions and wiggles of your own and the keyframe and sizes that you think look good or just skip the step altogether but just another cool twist that you can add to it. But at this point, we have our basic loading animation that goes from red to green in a circular fashion. The next thing I'm gonna show you how to do is create a quick number counter that goes from zero to 100 and a little loading text. So let's grab our text tool, press and click. It'll create a new empty text layer. And I'll start with just the number zero. I'll highlight that, you can use whatever font you want. This one's called VCR OSD Mono, and I'll just align that to the center if I want. But in order to get this to go from zero to 100 and animate, we need to add a little bit of expression controls. So let's drop down our text, and under the source text, let's click the option button on our keyboard, make sure it's held down, and click the key frame icon. That'll add an expression option for the source text, and under the effects and presets panel, let's search for one called slider control. It should pop up in the expression controls. I'll click and drag it on to this text layer. And under this little expression control, you should see this swirly pick whip option. I'll click and drag this to be attached to that slider control in the effects control panel. What this allows me to do is slide from zero to whatever number and it'll adjust the source text. In this case, it recognizes that it's a number and it'll automatically create a counter that will go at negative, forward, wherever we want. But you'll notice if we actually hit the keyframe icon, so let's go to the beginning, hit the keyframe icon on the expression slider, press zero and move over five seconds, let's say when the animation is complete, set it to be 100 that when we press play, it's got all these crazy decimal points that happen in between the animation. Now that could look kind of cool, actually it looks all glitched out, but we want it to be just the solid number for this example. So in front of our expression here, let's do a little bit of typing and just add the expression math.round and then put everything else in parentheses after that. So this will basically just round the number to a solid number giving us the result that we want to go from zero to 100, boom. Now you'll notice it's not timed right, it's not hitting the right spot, you know, it's not at 25% right there, it's only at 25% right there. And that's because of the ease out keyframe and the velocity of the keyframe, so you do wanna make sure all of those match up and also make sure that the keyframes are the same length apart. So I've made sure both of them are same length apart and the same sort of ease in and out and we have now a more even look so right here it's at 25 percent right here it's at 50 and at 100 everything matches up doesn't look funny from here basically just a few minor touches and finishing touches that you could choose to add for example i'll go to layer new adjustment layer and on the adjustment layer i could add an effect like glow and that'll give us just a little bit more of a color glow LCD type of feel. And also the one of the most important things that you saw in the beginning was that little sound effect. So I actually had just found this laser charging up sound on a site called freesound.org. But sound design is very important to selling animations like this because without that 
loading sound. It, ma it makes it sound so much cooler, so much more powerful. And after I added that loading sound, it kind of sounded in my head like it should have a cool burst on the screen animation. So in that same adjustment layer, I added a CC lens effect and I just keyframed it to go from zero at the beginning to as soon as that little initial sound dropped, I made it go all the way up to 500, which reveals the image, but does so in a cool burst kind of way that kind of sells the image as well. And if I wanted to add that loading text like you saw in the beginning, I could just create another text layer, make it say loading, space it, and size it however I want. Using a strobe effect, I clicked and dragged that onto the loading text layer, and I made it strobe with a duration of about 0.25 on for every 0.5 intervals, basically strobing twice per second. Turning that to makes layer transparent, I'll drag that under the adjustment layer for you guys. And then that'll turn on off blinking twice per second. And once it gets to 100%, there's many different ways that you can make it go complete. Uh, I could just cut this layer here, bring that in to stop right there, and then add another text layer, except this one would have no effects on it. And the source text would just be changed to say something like complete. So you could adjust the timing of that. Those are all minor details. But at this point, I'd consider the animation mostly done aside from minor tweaks and finishing touches. So hopefully, even if you don't plan on creating this animation, this was a fun project for you to watch or try out to practice in After Effects and learn many different little pieces and tools about shapes, expressions, keyframes, and more. If you guys enjoyed this video, definitely leave a like on it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you want to share your results with me, definitely tweet at me or send me a message on Instagram at Justin Odisho and follow me on there. And if you want to check out more of my videos, you can check out videos like this and more in the playlist on my channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.